Guys, this is Brett from Topo Ranger. I would like to just give you a little breakdown before we get started here as I'm uh, approaching the tunnel, or the Franken tunnel as I named it. And, and what I want to do is I just want to explain a little bit better why exactly I call this the Franken tunnel. Uh, I started exploring this tunnel probably, I want to say, about six months ago. Uh, I posted some uh, screenshots up on my Topo uh, Ranger Instagram feed, which is underscore ranger at Instagram and I decided to call it the Franken Tunnel and I said I call it this because it has a lot of different parts but I wanted to just kind of clarify that the thing that struck me the most about this tunnel when I first started exploring it I it had so many different construction styles within such a short distance within the first 200 feet it has about five or six different uh, styles of construction and these these different Actions relate, I believe, to different periods of history when this uh, tunnel uh, will over time. I call it the Franken Tunnel because of these distinctive sections of the tunnel. So it's kind of stitched together, kind of like Frankenstein was stitched together by all these different body parts. Um, another reason I think is because if you look right here, you can see the big, uh, the big bolts and stuff in this iron tube here. Well, I believe this section might have been put in the, in the 1920s. Kind of reminded me of the of the bolts on Frankenstein's neck. And also, uh, to some degree, it, this tunnel kind of strikes me as a place where you know Frankenstein might have tried to escape the villagers, uh, so to so to speak. Uh, in this case, the villagers would be in Columbia, Pennsylvania, which is where this tunnel is located. Um, it's just a really cool tunnel, and uh, uh, I had a lot of fun making this episode, so I hope you guys enjoy, all right? All right, guys, we're here at the Franken Tunnel, Columbia, Pennsylvania. It's my second trip. Last time I was here, I got about 150 feet up. That was just kind of like a recon trip. This is a very interesting tunnel. I call it the Franken Tunnel because it changes character so many times. The first 50 feet is this, this iron bolted together iron pipe which looks like it's flattening out uh, right here you can see it's starting to pinch down let's hope it holds out and right here you can see they have this braced up so this whole thing just doesn't pinch And this is the second part of the tunnel. And you can see how they filled it in here. This part of the tunnel is obviously older. Now, I don't know how far I'm gonna to get today. I'm by myself. I want to get at least as far as I did last time with this new camera. You can see the floor is actually stonework and there's different kinds of rock. You got sandstone, this is limestone. 
and the arch is brick. And just a little stream going. All right, and here's where it changes character again. Let's take a look back. It's just a really interesting tunnel because it changes. Here it pops up where you can stand. There's a remnants of a wall. Here you can see the, the arch of the brick. Limestone masonry there. Now this section is about seven feet high. I'd say about 15 feet wide. And there's some big cobbles on the floor. I'm gonna check the camera now. Sweating like a hog. Because it's the end of August. <laughs> Pennsylvania and it's hot. Usually tunnels give me some relief, but to be honest, it's not much cooler in here today than it is outside, which I think is gonna be in the low 90s. There's the entrance. Now we're hitting that cobble floor again. There's a little side feeder right there. I mean, you gotta wonder how old this section of the, of the tunnel is. All right, now it changes, it changes uh, character again. And it looks like it has a, the top of the arch is concrete. And the bottom section is brick. And uh, right here, looks like at one point, they covered the whole floor, this concrete aggregate, but it has since washed away. Now this is where I stopped last time. But we're, now we're gonna push on. There's a, uh, the water comes in right there off to the left. I just want to go at least go that far, see where it is. The ceiling gets a little low here. And it looks like there used to be an old pipe here. An old corrugated pipe used to lay in here. I can, I can hear stuff out, so I can hear. There's a little hatch up to the surface. I can hear cars very distinctly, very clearly. So I can't imagine where that. Where that far below the surface. And here's some kind of pipe. Got some debris lodged up in there. Obviously this thing floods. Okay, now we're into an all brick setting. All right, here's the water coming off from the left. It looks clean. Who knows where that's coming from. Now we're looking at an all brick surface here. And you can see there's just lots of infeeders coming up. Jesus. The hell is that? You can see, we can still see the, the entrance pretty clearly.
Here's an in-feeder that's blocked off there. Man, I tell you what, those trucks sound like they're right, right above us, which they are. Wow. Okay, now these look newish. I can feel cold air coming in from these. You can see these are, this is newish construction here. You got a concrete pipe. It's like the masonry is fairly recent. There's another one off there. This sucker just keeps going. It seems to hold its character for a while. Let's get out a, a, a beam light, a focus light. See what we can't see. Holy sh! All right, we're probably looking up at a storm drain right here. So that's where the north, that's where the sound of the street streets coming. I'm just gonna go ahead and check the light again. And I can feel that breeze coming in. Most definitely. It's hot though. I mean, it's warm. I got a little bit of a breeze coming in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the camera off the helmet for the return trip. All right. Let's see what we got down here. Wow, look at that. That sucker goes. Damn, we gotta be like right, right below the street level. Look at that creepy crawling. I'd say that's at least another 100 feet. You know, I don't know what happens there. Now let's turn this off. Yeah, I can't see quite far enough. But it goes away. It's heading up under those antiques buildings. That's where it's going. There's some old mill buildings up that way that have been converted into uh, big antique shops, multi-floored uh, antique shops. And, uh, I have a feeling that's where this is going.
All right, guys. Well, that was Franken Tunnel. Uh, like I said, second time I've been in there, and it just keeps going. To me, it looks like it goes the whole way under the industrial section here on the floodplain at the base of Columbia, and it just keeps going. The question is, once the tunnel hits the edge of town, town proper, what happens? Because from there, it could just end. It could be just kind of a, a local stormwater drainage tunnel for the for this uh, flat area. But if it keeps going from there, I mean, you could be looking at the main drain for the whole town possibly, or one of the main drains for the whole town, which means it would be very old. Uh, well, these portions of it would be very old and it would go uh, and the land surface starts to rise. So the tunnel, I would imagine either bores right through the rock or it goes with the land surface goes up. I mean, who, who knows what, what, what could await once we hit the edge of town and the topography starts to head up. Uh, so that's a, a very interesting question. Um, I wanna come back here, do some more filming, but I think next time I'm gonna have to bring somebody with me because I don't feel comfortable going much farther than, than I did today all by myself. All right, that's about all for today. So this is Brett for Topo Ranger, signing out. Thank you.